Hey Thinksters and welcome to this video where I want to show you real quick how to merge lists into a list of tuples and I will show you six Pythonic ways of doing this. Of course you won't need six ways uh, to do this in, in practice like one, one way is uh, more than enough but um, I think by studying the different approaches there are and discussing the pros and cons you will become a better coder overall. And also I mean in some cases you will also need, uh, want to use the way you prefer most. Because I mean, it's not as objective. You cannot say this is absolutely the best way. It's only like a matter of uh, of uh, your own preferences. Okay, so yeah, say you have um, the three lists here, and now you want to create a list of tuples. So you want to um, uh, group together the ith element of each list. Okay, so therefore we will, you will have a list of tuples, and each tuple is a group of the ith values. So for example. 0, the first tuple would be 0, 1 and 2, the second tuple would be Alice, Bob and Liz, the third tuple would consist of three elements, 4500, 6666 and 9999 and um, yeah, so this, this is basically your goal. How can you achieve this most effectively in Python? And now let's start with the most Pythonic way I would say, uh, which is the sip function. And uh, this sip function, uh, to, to, to use the sip function you would simply um, call sip on your list which you, which you want to like merge together, like very simple, but this would return a sip object. So if you, if you run this code, uh, so let's have a new shell. If you run this code, you see that the result is a sip object which is not human readable. So you need to convert it to a list first. Um, and now if you run it, you will see this is exactly the output you want. Okay, so you want to group together the ith element of our list, of our three lists, and we have done this. So we have uh, grouped together the integers, the strings, and the float values. And so basically you see the sip function sips together um, into, tup, into a list of tuples or into an iterable of tuples, the ith elements of the sequences you pass into the sip function. And here you pass three sequences uh, or lists um, L0, L1 and L2 and now we simply group together the ith element. So this is p exactly what you want in a very Pythonic and very efficient way uh, to doing this. So if, if this is everything you need then stop stop the video now. But there's like there, there are some sub subtleties. For example, what if you have um, say a list of lists and this stores all your elements like this. Okay, so now we, we have a list that holds all our lists and we want to zip together so we want to group together the ith elements of those lists. So this is just a different re representation, it's like a matrix representation. How do we do this now? Again we use um, the same approach but be, but using also the asterisk operator which does nothing but unpack all the elements of our outer list of lists into the zip function as an argument. So this asterisk operator it basically removes the outer bracket, the outer square bracket and passes the uh, elements directly into the zip function as arguments. Okay, So this asterisk operator removes the outer bracket so to say and pushes the elements into the zip function's argument. And this is like even more concise, even more pythonic than the first method if you have stored it in a list of lists and you see it generates exactly the same output. So all of the methods we will, we will look at now um, will basically produce the same output, we will just use it to check whether they actually are the same. Good, the third method is also quite Pythonic but it's um, a bit more complicated so we use list comprehension statement. Uh, list comprehension is enclosed in square brackets because we create a new list so um, therefore we um, yeah, now we need to define two things, the expression and the context in list comprehension. Um, so the context, what is the context? This is the number of um, values on which you want to apply um, some uh, expression, okay, uh, to put in, and these elements and are then pu um, placed into your new list. And basically, you you go over all elements in, so over all i, so all values i indices um, in the range of values between zero and the length of the first list l zero. Okay, so this is this is like your your context. This is a con contextual information. So basically, so basically, it takes all the values zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on until it reaches the length of your list. And in our case, we have uh, three elements. The length is three, so therefore we go over the indices zero, one, two. 
And now what, what do we want to do with this indices? We simply create a new tuple object because we want to have a list of tuples. So therefore our expression creates a new tuple and the tuple consists of three elements. The ith element of list zero, the ith element of list one and the ith element of list two. Okay, so these three together, um, these three elements together, grouped together into a tuple is exactly what we want to accomplish. So if you print this, we, get, we should get exactly the same result and you see, okay, it generates the same result. So all three different w uh, m methods we have looked at generate exactly the same result. So are there more? Are there more methods? If you want, you can pause the video and try uh, to think of more methods that do this. Actually, I would say that one approach that is, that is a standard approach used by coders that come from different languages like Java or C++ or Go, um, so many, many people that come from these non-functional uh, languages, they would use this approach because it's like, mo it feels most natural to them to use simple loops. Uh, so, so they first create an empty list then they have a loop for i in range length from length of L0. Okay, so we have the length function that gives us the number of elements in the list L0 and we want to have all the numbers, so in the range uh, iterable, so all the numbers up to this length of the elements. But this is of course excluded, so it's a stop index, so it's excluded from our range um, elements. So therefore we have, if, if the length is three, we will go up all the way to two, to the value two. Um, and three will not be included in the range. Okay, so we will have the elements, uh, the indices zero, one, and two. Again, uh, it's similar, similar as list comprehension. So people who, no Python well, they will probably use list comprehension, but people who come from different programming languages, they won't know or understand list comprehension, so they will use this method. They append one element at a time, going over the whole um, loop, and then what element do they append to the list? Yeah, it's a, tu it's a tuple, it's a tuple of values, so now you can access the ith element of list L0, the ith element of list L1 and the eighth element of list L2. So this is exactly the same as here in the list comprehension statement, but with a simple for loop, okay? And if you're done, you can print it. So this is, I would say it's it's very easy to understand if you are used to, to basic looping and to um, programming languages like Java and C++. This may even be your preferred uh, way of doing it, but I would say the most Pythonic way is to use a zip function and convert it to a list. Okay, then the fifth, method is similar to the fourth method. So we basically do, do the same, so we can copy paste everything here, but with one important difference, and this is to use the enumerate function. The enum enumerate function on an iterable returns tuples of values, where the first tuple element is the index, and the second is the element itself. Okay, so it goes over all elements in an iterable and returns a tuple where the first uh, element, tuple element is the index of this element and the second is the element. Okay, so for example, if you have enumerate over a list, say of values Alice, Bob, and Liz. So say we, we call enumerate this, Okay, we need to convert it to a, to a list first to see what is happening here. List, now, then you see, okay, it returns this list of tuples where the first tuple value is the index of the element and the second is the element itself. Good, and now we can, use, we can do the same. So we can go over all indices and elements uh, in the enumerate function and then we simply use um, the indexing method as before, okay? So it's, I would say it's a bit more Pythonic to use enumerate here, especially because you can use X <laughs> to, to replace uh, like the first element here, because this is exactly the, the element at index I of list L0. Okay, so if you, if you print this, you see it uh, consists of this, exactly the same elements again. So we have now five different approaches of accomplishing this same, ob same ob objective of generating a list of tuples from a given from a given number of lists. Okay, then there's one, one last method which I wanted to show you and I think this method is also quite Pythonic. I left it to the end because it's just a bit different, it's functional programming, but it's, it's very natural actually to do this. Okay, so 
we can directly out, out of the box we can we can even have a one liner solution so we can print the result directly and now what do we want to print let's first use the map function so the outer function for now is the map function consisting of two elements the first one or two arguments um, the first one is a function a function to be applied to each element and the second one is are some iterables okay and these are this is not well known so it is well known that you can use a map function with one iterable and then you just just apply the function to each element of a single iterable but actually it is not well known that you can pass multiple iterables into the map function like l1 l2 l0 l1 and l2 so now we have passed three iterables into the map function and now our function t takes three elements as input so not this is like if you pass only one iterable then it will take only one um, argument as input our lambda function but if you pass three elements then you, it's, it takes three elements so it, it always applies a function to the three ith elements of the sequences okay and um, so this is exactly what we want to do yeah so we want to return a tuple of the ith values in our sequences and so basically if we get three elements in we simply group them together into a tuple and return the tuple and then we pass all the all the <coughs> iterables we want to um, group together into a list of tuples okay and this now returns a map object so therefore we need to convert it first because the map object is not it doesn't look nicely on in the python shell so therefore we convert it to a list and you see it generates exactly the same output so this is this is not very well known that you can um, pass multiple iterables into a map function and then use a lambda function that takes multiple arguments rather than only a single argument um, but it's very pythonic it's very efficient and it's functional programming style so i think i so i like it basically and the great thing is that by default that this is like the b default behavior so i've i've seen that you can also do the following yeah you can pass none as a function and let let the map function do the default thing so like the identity operation because you actually don't want to change the ith elements of of your iterables you pass you want to leave them blank so therefore you can you can basically do the you can live with the identity operation doing nothing with these elements just grouping them together and throwing th throwing them out and this should work as well non-type oh no no okay now then it doesn't work sorry for this so i i've seen it it works in python uh, 2.0 but it doesn't work in python 3.7 which is the version i have um but okay i mean it's it's like this then okay so so then we we must live with this one and this but this is also beautiful this works beautifully okay so uh, thanks for listening to this tutorial with the six best most pythonic ways of um, converting multiple list into a list of tuples if you like the video then you may want to check out our uh, new our new advanced level python book uh, called coffee break python mastery and this consists of 100 mastery level python puzzles that um, will, will push you from intermediate to mastery level basically with uh, if you know the elo rating for python which we use at thingster.com to to evaluate the skill level of a python coder um, then you, you will know that okay elo level 2000 plus is really advanced level um, python python um, puzzles and we will have like we will gradually lead you from intermediate level to advanced level python puzzles and it's a lot of fun doing it so check out the book coffee break python mastery um, and i will give a link in the description below i guess okay thanks for listening to this video and see you in the next video bye